Philip Edward Thomas was a British poet, essayist, and novelist. He is commonly considered a war poet, although few of his poems deal directly with his war experiences, and his career in poetry only came after he had already been a successful writer and literary critic. In 1915, he enlisted in the British Army to fight in the First World War and was killed in action during the Battle of Arras in 1917, soon after he arrived in France. Life and career. Equals early life equals, Thomas was born in Lambeth, London. He was educated at Battersea Grammar School, St. Paul's School in London and Lincoln College, Oxford. His family were mostly Welsh. In June 1899 he married Helen Barry Nice Noble, in Fulham, while still an undergraduate, and determined to live his life by the pen. He then worked as a book reviewer, reviewing up to 15 books every week. He was already a seasoned writer by the outbreak of war, having published widely as a literary critic and biographer as well writing on the countryside. He also wrote a novel, The Happy Go Lucky Morgans, a book of delightful disorder. Thomas worked as literary critic for the Daily Chronicle in London and became a close friend of Welsh tramp poet W. H. Davis, whose career he almost single-handedly developed. From 1905, Thomas lived with his wife Helen and their family at Elsie's farm near Seven Oaks, Kent. He rented to Davis a tiny cottage nearby, and nurtured his writing as best he could. On one occasion, Thomas even had to arrange for the manufacture, by a local wheelwright, of a makeshift wooden leg for Davis. Even though Thomas thought that poetry was the highest form of literature and regularly reviewed it, he only became a poet himself at the end of 1914 when living at Steep, East Hampshire, and initially published his poetry under the name Edward Easterway. By August 1914, the village of Demock in Gloucestershire had become the residence of a number of literary figures, including Lasel Abercrombie, Wilfred Gibson and American poet Robert Frost. Edward Thomas was a visitor at this time. Thomas immortalized the railway station at Adlerstrop in a poem of that name after his train made a stop at the Cotswold station on June 24, 1914, shortly before the outbreak of the First World War. Equals War Service equals. Thomas enlisted in the Artists' Rifles in July 1915, despite being a mature married man who could have avoided enlisting. He was unintentionally influenced in this decision by his friend Frost, who had returned to the U.S. but sent Thomas an advance copy of The Road Not Taken. The poem was intended by Frost as a gentle mocking of indecision, particularly the indecision that Thomas had shown on their many walks together. However, most audiences took the poem more seriously than Frost intended, and Thomas similarly took it seriously and personally, and it provided the last straw in Thomas' decision to enlist. Thomas was promoted corporal, and in November 1916 was commissioned into the Royal Garrison Artillery as a second lieutenant. He was killed in action soon after he arrived in France at Arras on Easter Monday 9 April 1917. To spare the feelings of his widow Helen, she was told the fiction of a bloodless death that is that Thomas was killed by the concussive blast wave of one of the last shells fired as he stood to light his pipe and that there was no mark on his body. However, a letter from his commanding officer Franklin Lushington written in 1936 states that in reality the cause of Thomas' death was due to being shot clean through the chest. W. H. Davis was devastated by the death and his commemorative poem Killed in Action was included in Davis's 1918 collection Raptures. Thomas is buried in the Commonwealth War Grave Cemetery at Annie in France. Equals personal life equals, Thomas was survived by his wife, Helen their son Murfin and their two daughters Bronin and Mavanwi. After the war, Thomas's widow, Helen, wrote about her courtship and early married life with Edward in the autobiography as it was. Later she added a second volume, World Without End. Mavanwi later said that the books had been written by her mother as a form of therapy to help lift herself from the deep depression into which she had fallen following Thomas's death. Helen's short memoir My Memory of W. H. Davis was published in 1973, after her own death. In 1988, Helen's writings were gathered into a book published under the title Under Storm's Wing, which included As It Was in World Without End as well as a selection of other short works by Helen and her daughter Mavanway and six letters sent by Robert Frost to her husband. Commemorations, 
Thomas is commemorated in Poetzer Euro Unregistered Trademark Corner, Westminster Abbey, London, by memorial windows in the churches at Steep and at Eastbury in Berkshire and with a blue plaque at 14 Lansdowne Gardens in Stockwell, South London, where he was born. There is also a plaque dedicated to him at 113 Cowley Road, Oxford, where he lodged before entering Lincoln College. East Hampshire District Council have created a literary walk at shoulder of Mutton Hill and Steep dedicated to Thomas, which includes a memorial stone erected in 1935. The inscription includes the final line from one of his essays, And I rose up and knew I was tired and I continued my journey. As Philip Edward Thomas poet soldier he is commemorated, alongside Reginald Townsend Thomas actor soldier died 1918 who is buried at the spot, and other family members, at the Northeast Surrey Cemetery. He is the subject of the biographical play The Dark Earth and the Light Sky by Nick Deere, which premiered at the Amida Theatre, London in November 2012, with Pip Carter as Thomas and Hattie Morahan as his wife Helen. Poetry Thomas's poems are noted for their attention to the English countryside and a certain colloquial style. The short poem in memoriam exemplifies how his poetry blends the themes of war and the countryside. On November 11, 1985, Thomas was among 16 Great War poets commemorated on a slate stone unveiled in Westminster Abbey's Poets' Corner. The inscription, written by fellow poet Wilfred Owen, reads, My subject is war, and the pity of war. The poetry is in the pity. Thomas was described by British poet laureate Ted Hughes as the father of us all. At least 19 of his poems were set to music by the Gloucester composer Ivor Gurney. Selected works. Equals poetry collections equals, six poems per tree press, 1916. Poems, Holt, 1917. Last poems, Selwyn and Blunt, 1918. Collected poems, Selwyn and Blunt. 1920. Two poems, Inkpen and Grant, 1927. The poems of Edward Thomas, ed. R. George Thomas, Oxford University Press, 1978. Edward Thomas, A Mirror of England, ed. Elaine Wilson, Paul and Colorado, 1985. Edward Thomas, Selected Poems, ed. Ian Hamilton, Bloomsbury, 1995. The Poems of Edward Thomas, ed. Peter Sachs, Hansel Books, 2003. The Annotated Collected Poems, ed. Edna Longley, Blowardake's Books, 2008. Equals Prose Fiction equals, The Happy Go Lucky Morgans, Duckworth, 1913. 2. Equals Prose equals, In Pursuit of Spring Thomas Nelson and Sons, April 1914. 3. Equals Essays and Collections equals, Horae Solitarii, Dutton, 1902. Oxford, A. N. C. Black, 1903. Beautiful Wales, Black, 1905. The Heart of England, Dutton, 1906. The South Country, Dutton, 1906. Rest and Unrest, Dutton, 1910. Light and Twilight, Duckworth, 1911. The Ignealed Way, Constable, 1913. The Last Chief, Jonathan Cape, 1928. References to Thomas by other writers. In 1918 W. H. Davis published his poem Killed in Action to mark the personal loss of his close friend and mentor. Many poems about Thomas by other poets can be found in the book Selected Friends, Poems for and About Edward Thomas, edited by Anne Harvey, and Branch Lines. Edward Thomas and Contemporary Poetry, edited by Guy Cuthbertson and Lucy Newlin. Norman Douglas considered Thomas handicapped in life through lacking a little touch of bestiality, a little JME and Fusteism. He was too scrupulous. In his 1980 autobiography, Ways of Escape, Graham Greene references Thomas's poem The Other in describing his own experience of being bedeviled by an imposter. Edward Thomas's collected poems was one of Andrew Motion's ten picks for the poetry section of the Guardian Essential Library in October 2002. In his 2002 novel Youth, J. M. Kuezi has his main character, 
intrigued by the survival of pre-modernist forms in British poetry, ask himself, what happened to the ambitions of poets here in Britain? Have they not digested the news that Edward Thomas and his world are gone forever? In contrast, Irish critic Edna Longley writes that Thomas's Lob, a 150-line poem, strangely preempts the wasteland through verses like, This is tall Tom that bore slash the logs in, and with Shakespeare in the hall slash once talked. In his 1995 novel, Borrowed Time, the author Robert Goddard bases the home of the main character at Green Hayes in the village of Steep, where Thomas lived from 1913. Goddard weaves some of the feeling from Thomas's poems into the mood of the story and also uses some quotes from Thomas's works. Will Self's 2006 novel, The Book of Dave, has a quote from the South Country as the book's epigraph, I like to think how easily nature will absorb London as she absorbed the mastodon, setting her spiders to spin the winding sheet and her worms to fill in the graves, and her grass to cover it pitifully up, adding flowers a euro as an unknown hand added them to the grave of Nero. The children's author Linda Newbery has published a novel, Lob inspired by the Edward Thomas poem of the same name and containing oblique references to other work by him. Willie Wollstenham, formerly of UK rock band Barclay James Harvest, has used a humorous variation of Thomas' poem Adler Strop on the first song of his 2004 live album, Fiddling Meanly, where he imagines himself in a retirement home and remembers the name of the location where the album was recorded. The poem was read at Wollstenham's funeral on January 19, 2011. Stuart McInerney in his book Adventures on the High Tees mentions Thomas and his poem Adler Strop. McInerney visits the now abandoned and overgrown station which was closed by Beeching in 1966. Robert McFarlane, in his 2012 book The Old Ways, critiques Thomas and his poetry in the context of his own explorations of paths and walking as an analogue of human consciousness. In his 2012 novel Sweet Tooth, Ian Masuan has a character invoke Thomas's poem Adler's Drop, as a sweet, old-fashioned thing, and an example of the sense of pure existence, of being suspended in space and time, a time before a cataclysmic war. The last years of Thomas's life are explored in A Conscious Englishman, a 2013 biographical novel by Margaret Keeping, published by Street Books. References Additional Sources Hollis, M. 2011, Now All Roads Lead to France, The Last Years of Edward Thomas, Faber and Faber. ISBN 978-0-571-24598-7. External links, Edward Thomas Profile, Poets.org. Edward Thomas Profile, Poetry Foundation. Works by Edward Thomas at Project Gutenberg. Works by or about Edward Thomas at Internet Archive, Works by Edward Thomas at LibriVox, Thomas, Edward, Works, Internet Archive. Edward Thomas Fellowship, UK, The Edward Thomas Fellowship. Democ Poets Archive, Archives and Special Collections, UK, University of Gloucestershire. Edward Thomas Archive at Cardiff University, The Edward Thomas Collection, The First World War Poetry Digital Archive, UK. Oxford University, archival material relating to Edward Thomas listed at the UK National Archives, Portraits of Edward Thomas at the National Portrait Gallery, London.